Our goal for this channel is to bring the delicious back into your food business and home by sharing tools, systems, and ideas to combat the stresses of hospitality-based businesses. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I know it's been a long time since I've been up and posting. The Power Kitchen podcast, those food videos, all of it was so moody. But let me tell you, it was a much needed break, one that I used to purge and cleanse myself of the distraction and a somewhat digital addition that I was unaware I even had. In the last 18 months, I've been able to refocus my purpose for what it is that I want to do with my life, both professionally and personally. During that time, it was quite a vulnerable space to be in, where I realized that there were many challenges, issues, and behavioral abnormalities that I had to rectify. So I'm back here with renewed energy and renewed focus. But let me give you some insight into the backstory of how we came here today and what you can expect with the content for this show moving forward. Yes, the podcast, The Power Kitchen, was tremendously beneficial and uplifting for myself, but I felt it was half-baked, so we had to put that to bed. And it was the same with the multitude of different medias that I was putting out, whether it be health and wellness, food, humor, or nutritional information. So I refocused by immersing in the thing that I love to do the most, which is to cook. And that's what I did. I would go to work. I would come home from work after cooking for eight hours, even sometimes up to 15 or 16 hours. And then I would create a new recipe, practice my craft, really hone in on the flavors, the textures, and of course the recipes. So moving forward, what I'd like to do is, is help people people in places of business that serve and offer food and drinks to give them some help and assistance to managing the day-to-day -day issues that I've ascertained over years and years of being part of different businesses. In terms of business myself, I owned a personal training, strength and conditioning and nutritional business, which I ran for six years and it was a really a lot of fun. But hey, things evolve, they change and they move forward. And the reason I'm here today is because although I love health and fitness, what I've always been akin to is food. From a very young age, I remember hassling my aunt to cook with her. At times, she was cooking at really high temperatures, like with uh, frying oil or high temperature sugar, making those beautiful Sri Lankan delicacies that myself and my family have grown up with. From there, it was a love at first sight, and it's continued on all through my high schooling years, all through my university years, and I did try to defer away from a life in food where I studied information systems for about a year. It was some of the most intoxicatingly boring stuff that I've ever come across, although I do see its value in today's technological world. I also tried my hand at classical music. I played classical cello for 12 years and studied at the Conservatorium of Music in Brisbane. But what I really found that I was great at is the pragmatic aspect of doing whatever it is that we're doing, which is why cooking is so beautifully aligned with my being, because it is a pragmatic effort. We can have a recipe on a card, we can have dictated recipes from our chefs or our co-workers, but at the end of the day, you have to translate that theory into a practice, and that's what really sets me alight. In the last 18 months, in my hiatus from social media, I've realized that that is truly my superpower. The pragmatic aspect of doing the theory, applying the science, moving, acting, putting my hands to work. So through the act of working out what different ingredients were valuable for, whether it be a salt, a spice, a pepper, an ingredient, a texture, a protein, a starch, or a vegetable, or a sauce, a beautiful sauce, I found that there are many links between different cultures in terms of their flavor profiles and their textures. And because I'm a mix as well, I'm a, I'm a mixed race individual, it seems very natural to me to mix these flavors, textures, and profiles together. 
Also, in the last few years, I have worked mainly as a casual chef. The reason being is that is there is not enough incentive to be based in one particular business. I see values and experiences in all different types of businesses, and I want to expose myself to that for the end goal of learning new tips, tricks, techniques, and experiences. When I go for interviews, or I have done in the past, the one thing that I say to the person interviewing me is I don't really mind or have a preference as to the food itself. I really have the preference to who I'm working with. It is the connection with the individuals within that business that really makes me excited. So in the last several years, I've worked in pubs, I've worked in clubs, I've worked in high-end restaurants in New Farm in the Valley in Brisbane, very expensive places. I've worked in a plethora of easygoing, home style, family-oriented businesses as well. And I've noticed a few gaps in the market, meaning there are quality gaps. There are quality gaps in both the food, the service, and also in the beverages, whether it be a cafe who serves amazing coffee, but the food is lacking, or whether the food is incredible, but the service is lacking. Either way, there are some gaps. Now, moving forward into 2023, I figured if I really want to elevate things in my world, I need to figure out what makes me tick. And one of those things was being my own boss, not for the sake of telling others what to do, but for the sake of knowing that when I'm in a situation where I'm just a piece of the puzzle, I'm just a cog in the, in the mechanics, it's very difficult to influence the overarching principles by which a business works. And inside me, that was a disconnect. I didn't feel like I could express adequately and correctly to get the right or at least a better result as I saw it in those moments, whether it be systematically or a flavor or a recipe. Either way, I felt this disconnect between what I truly desired out of my experience in the professional world and where I was putting myself on the daily environment. So I'm here and I've started the business education process, something which eluded much ignorance to myself. I realized that a lot of places that I've worked with don't truly understand their customer personas. They don't truly understand who they're servicing. They're just regurgitating what they've learned from previous experiences. And I fall into that category as well. I too created products in my personal training business and nutrition business that were guided based on my own personal experiences in health, fitness, and lifting weights. Now, as I've got small children, I'm thinking, how would I like their professional experience to be? Do I want them to be a cookie cutter model where they graduate high school, get a trade, get a profession, and just follow through in that mechanistic way that we so often see professionals become frustrated? with or could I help them to understand the system, understand what variables are at play and how to create a path that they fall in love with. So I'm here today to help others who may be in my situation where they are halfway through life, have owned a business or are looking to own a business, but things aren't quite sticking, they aren't quite going well or as well as they'd like to do. The overheads are well through the roof, there's lots of venture capital in the business and all lots of debt and they're just wondering how is it that they can overcome these challenges. It's a difficult situation to be in. Sweetie, don't move the chance. Thank you. It's a difficult situation to be in because once a person or a business starts to accrue debt, it's very difficult to pay off that debt with an existing revenue stream. And so I'm going to allude to you the multitude of ways existing businesses can leverage the existing revenue streams that they've got, create other revenue streams or lateral revenue streams from 
from the same products, just in a different way, how to save money through process management, how to improve their relationships with their staff, how to retain staff, how to go about hiring the right staff, and how to be a really great leader. It's sad to say, after 20 years, one of the biggest things that I wish was part of the chef industry was strong leadership training. Often the leadership that I've felt coming towards me comes from a dictatorship point of view, which definitely has its merits in that make or break situation where you really need to work and get this thing done in a nanosecond. That definitely works. But my experience of long-term leadership has come from outside the industry, in the tech world, in the philanthropy world, in the finance world, and of course in the personal development world as well. But that's up to you to traverse. That's up to you to do your research and to see what sticks for you. There are definitely a multitude of speakers that I look up to, a multitude of academics that I look up to, and, and one in particular that really got me on the course of changing my habits and my behaviors is a lady named Carol Dweck, or should I say Dr. Carol Dweck. Her book, Mindset, was pivotal for me in understanding that I had wasted a lot of time, that I had wasted a lot of energy, and I had created a lot of disharmonious relationships. Her book, Mindset, alludes to the act of children in her studies where she worked out and coined the phrase, the growth mindset. The growth mindset is something that I've wanted to have my entire life or wanted to leverage my entire life, but didn't quite know how to get it. And so if you'd like to check out her book, I recommend you do so. There'll be a link in the description because in there it details some of the key character traits around achievement and success that are somewhat innate to the human condition from a very early age. I've got to say a big thanks to Carol for putting that work out and springboarding me onto a learning about behavior. So here we are, it's 2023, and we're back in the social media game. What to expect from here? I have outlined a few details about that, but there is more to it than that, because it's not my job, it's not my personal job to just tell people what to do. I'd love to show you how to do it. And with the things like coronaviruses and wars going around the world, one thing that is really dear to my heart are families. I have a family of my own, and yes, I've taken them for granted in the past, but I don't want to take them for granted any longer. And as a part of that, is I will create recipes at a discount price so families can enjoy cost-effective food in their homes that can be presented in a restaurant fashion. So it is dual building in that sense where if you're a restaurant owner or a cafe owner or a food business owner, you can actually adapt the same meals you're cooking for your family in your place of work or your place of business. And to me, that's super exciting. It sounds super unlikely. However, cooking is an art form which has been made very accessible by the things that we see on social media and the internet. And it is my wish that everyone enjoys a great meal every single day. And to help fight things like obesity, cardiovascular disease, and other diseases that are all lifestyle affected, we can enjoy healthy food that tastes amazing and is cost effective. We don't necessarily need to convert to a really high priced, organic, free range, biodynamic lifestyle. For those people who fall into a high paying income bracket, for sure, you've got it made and you can afford these really expensive products. But for the rest of the people who are just trying to just trying to survive in a world filled with chaos and anarchy, I'm here to bring some ease to the issue of finding what foods to put on your table every single day. 
I tested this theory out when I worked in a, a cafe chain in Brisbane. There's three different cafes that they had, and my hypothesis was is that we could spark interest by adding more variety more frequently, meaning we would have our staple menu, which I would tweak on the weekly basis in terms of the recipe and the presentation, looking for better quality ingredients at a great competitive price, looking for more interesting garnishes, which make the food look more opulent and luxurious, but don't break the food budget. I then looked at different demographics of people and what they were interested in eating, whether it be a pulled pork burger, uh, eggs benedict, a garlic mushroom sandwich, or even a pepper steak. So all of these different ingredients in here, depending on how we presented the food, what plates, the way that we cut the sandwiches, the way that we plated the different ingredients, all had a different emotional impact on the customer. And that was really uplifting for me because plating a dish up can be quite versatile. You can have the same ingredients plated in many different ways. Whether you do it in a typical pop style fashion where you've got a starch, a side of a salad, and the protein or do you cut the chips by hand or do you mash the potato and quenelle it nicely and you have a beautiful steak sitting over it and you fan it by cutting it thinly and that salad instead of your typical mixed salad you might have some pickled vegetables like carrots and garlic or beetroots mixed in with some finely picked herbs like sherbet, tarragon, parsley or coriander with a nice beautiful type of dressing now, two different dishes made up of much the same components at the ingredient level. So it's this type of thinking, the lateral design thinking, that I want to allude you guys to, that you can break away from the social norms or the pigeonholes of your food business or your home food context and elevate your food experiences. I hope that entices you. And if it does so, I would really appreciate it if you take the time to subscribe and hit the notification bell on my channel. It'll let me know that you're interested in the content that I'm putting out and feel free to leave a comment as well. Now, despite the fact that I've been in the industry for 20 years, I do know that there is more learning to be had. And if you feel like I've hit the mark, please tell me. But if you've also felt like there was something missing or you'd like to see something different, please also let me know. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to addressing some beautiful food issues moving forward into 2023 and beyond.